DC and Marvel comics are definitely in the mood to do mantle swaps. We'll be seeing it all over the place, especially at DC comics right now as they're ramping up for the death of the Justice League. And today we finally got, I don't know if it's truly the passing of the torch between Arthur Curry and Jackson Hyde, but they're certainly calling Jackson Hyde Aquaman now. And we got a speech from Arthur Curry about handing the mantle over. DC and Marvel, of course, have been doing mantle swaps for a very long time. In the past, they've actually been quite successful. There have been very many success stories. The one that stands out the most in my mind, of course, being Wally West, but we certainly had Ant-Man and other mantles swap between characters at a successful rate. You could say that Marvel Comics handing the mantle of Captain Marvel over to Carol Danvers was successful, but it doesn't feel like Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel has taken off. And DC Comics is having a hell of a time getting Jace Fox over as the new Batman. One of the reasons is Batman still exists. There's still Bruce Wayne. So I do think you have an extra hurdle to overcome if you have the original character still in the universe. Of course, with DC Comics, we know the Justice League are going to die in the Justice League only, and they're, the characters are still going to be alive in the other series. Don't know that this is going to be successful. If you are not aware who Jackson Hyde is, this is the second Aquaman. He's the partner and former protege of Arthur Curry, the original Aquaman. And prior to becoming Aquaman, he was the second hero to use the name Aqualad and a member of the Teen Titans for a short time. He is the son of Black Manta and an ex rebel named Lucia, and he is openly gay. This character was created by Greg Weissman and Brandon Bietti for the Young Justice cartoon. We've heard from what appears to be the head DC Comics writer these days, Joshua Williamson, about the death of the Justice League and this dark crisis that we're getting up. We're essentially... The Justice League, the classic characters that we know, except for one, apparently will return. I have a feeling it's going to be Naomi, which wouldn't exactly be a classic Justice League character. Or I guess it could be Black Adam, another character not normally on the Justice League themselves. But the classic characters are going to be dead. Well, maybe they're not going to be dead. They're actually going to be kind of in purgatory. And a new generation of heroes are going to have to take over. I'm expecting that we're going to see John Kent Superman Jace Fox, Batman, Jackson Hyde, Aquaman, Yara Floor as Wonder Girl, Wonder Woman. Some people call them Justice League queer. I would say that they're just the younger, more diverse lineup of DC Comics heroes. This has been tried in the past, most specifically with Marvel Comics, and it was an absolute failure. I do not expect this to be any different. You know, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Thank you very much, Dr. Phil. Will the passing of the torch from Arthur Curry to Jackson Hyde be successful? I'm not really sure. You know, it all depends on the quality of the writing and how it's done. I can tell you right now from Aquaman the Becoming, number six, which I imagine a lot of people that bought into that miniseries were disappointed to see the words prelude to Aquaman on the top of their comic book and realizing that the miniseries they just invested a half a year into wasn't an actual story. It was a prelude to the real story going on in Aquaman. In my opinion, Brandon Thomas, the writer of Aquaman Becoming is actually pretty darn good. He had a really good Aquaman story in Future State. It was one of the real standouts with Jackson Hyde and Andy Curry, the daughter of Mira and and Arthur Curry. Unfortunately, they did not take that path, which I thought was pretty solid. They've gone with this, and I don't think it's going to work out. Let's talk about how they're actually doing the handoff, because in my opinion, if you're going to hand the mantle off from established character to a new character, This is how you don't do it. And basically, that's using the established hero to praise the new hero and talk about how great they are. You need to demonstrate for the reader and the established hero why the new hero deserves the mantle before you hand it off. And it doesn't exactly happen here. The first thing that we see is Jackson Hyde and Arthur Curry kind of in the past training with Mira playing with Andy Curry in the background. And Jackson Hyde says, but I'll never have what you have, no matter how much I might want it. And I'll never be Aquaman. He doesn't actually have the power sets. He can't communicate with marine life and things of that nature like Arthur Curry. So it makes him a bit of an odd choice to replace him. And after saying, I'll never be Aquaman, this is what Arthur Curry says. Why the hell not? What do you think you're doing here, Jackson? We're helping you get ready. Everything has changed for Mira and I. Everything, we all need to be ready. What he's talking about there is them becoming parents. DC Comics is already essentially told us about nine months ago that Arthur Curry was at that time, they said he was going to retire and hand the mantle over to Jackson Hyde. So he could be like a stay at home dad. Me personally, I would favor that I'm a stay at home dad. I'm not talking trash on the stay at home dads out there. We got to stick together, fellas. 
Arthur continues, Atlantis didn't want me either. They were angry that I even existed because it was a reminder that the world was bigger than they wanted it to be. And somehow, with my human father, with my conflict about where it was I truly belonged, I became their king. I became responsible for them. And still some of them hated me for it. You know what that feels like to be discarded, to be underestimated, to be treated as if the only place you belong is on the outside. So there you have Arthur Curry saying, you are the exact same as I am, but he's not. Arthur Curry is a is a character stuck between two worlds. He's half human and half Atlantean, and he does have powers, and he can communicate with, with marine life, and he does have a rightful claim to the throne of Atlantis within the DC Comics universe. Jackson Hyde is the son of the greatest villain in Atlantean history, or one of the greatest villains in Atlantean history, Black Manta. It's a completely different situation, and he does not have the powers that make Aquaman Aquaman. But of course, that is not enough to use Arthur Curry to tell you and I, the readers, that Jackson Hyde and he are the exact same. Jackson says to Arthur, I'm sorry they're calling me Aquaman. Some people said it, and now it's turned into this whole thing, but he gets cut off, and this is what Arthur Curry has to say about it, the Aquaman himself. Jackson, we talked about this. This is what we wanted, right? For everyone to accept you. Jackson says, that's not what we talked about. You said being Aquaman is about never being accepted. Arthur says, no, Jackson, that's not. That's not what I meant at all. The name doesn't. It only meant that you were like me, that you face similar things. And Jackson, if you're ready to say you're Aquaman, then you're Aquaman. And it doesn't matter what the hell anyone else thinks about it. Jackson says, great, then we're good. You're Aquaman, I'm Aquaman. This is the worst way to do a mantle swap, to where you have the main hero bestowing it upon them, and the new hero doesn't really earn it. Him just saying, you know what? You're just like me. We're one and the same. You earn the mantle just like I do. Even though Arthur Curry has been in comic books, for 80 years, saving people and have been a part of the Justice League pretty much that entire time. Readers see right through this BS. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like it's within the confines of the universe, and it doesn't feel like an earned mantle, so people will reject it. Of course, some people will accept it. There are Jackson Hyde fans from the Young Justice cartoons. There are probably Jackson Hyde fans from the comic books. The overwhelming majority are going to laugh at this and say, no, that's not how you do it. I see right through what you're doing. You can put these words in Arthur Curry's mouth, but I never saw Jackson Hyde earn that mantle, that title, and Aquaman is still here anyway, so it doesn't matter. Find another name and be a hero that way. Time and time again, DC and Marvel turn to this writing trope to try and get new heroes over it fails every time. Might have worked in the past, probably did work in the past, but there have been so many mantle swaps lately, and they've used this technique so many times, everyone sees through it, nobody accepts it, and it puts the new hero at such a disadvantage trying to get over with the readers, the actual Aquaman fans, the DC readers, the Justice League fans, and it becomes essentially insurmountable no matter how good the writer is. And I'll tell you right here, after reading this, this isn't a bad comic book. But this isn't how you do it in Brandon Thomas, who I think has a chance to be a pretty big name in comic books. You know, he failed his test here. He was supposed to get Jackson Hyde over as a potential suitor or replacement to the Aquaman title, and it did not work here. There's a few other things in here that don't work with the character as well. When he is portrayed in this comic book, he is a petulant child. He has a very bad attitude. He has extreme anger issues. He's constantly yelling and screaming at the people that are trying to help him, including Arthur Curry himself, which means this character isn't ready for the kind of responsibility that Aquaman has. He's not ready for the throne of Atlantis. He's not ready to be the hero of Atlantis. He's not ready to be the hero that bridges the gap between Atlantis you know, and, and the people on, on the mainland Earth. He just isn't, just by the way that the character is portrayed. I understand what Brandon Thomas is doing here by showing that he's having internal conflict getting over this. But the way he's expressing himself, it makes it clear that you can call him Aquaman all you want. Arthur Curry can do that, but he's not ready for the mantle. There's another thing in here. This one doesn't have as much to do with the, the mantle swap, but it's another example of using Arthur Curry to try and get another character over. I think Mira's pretty much over... Anyway, I think 
Dan Abnett per- did a really good job, to be completely honest. If you haven't read Dan Abnett's Aquaman run from DC Comics Rebirth, you are missing out on a gem of an Aquaman run. Not quite as good as Jeff John's run in the New 52, which I think is fantastic. But it's it's right behind there as one of the really, really fantastic Aquaman stories of modern times. The only problem is is actually when Mira decides that uh, they, they make her the hero for a bit, Dan Abnett has a tendency to do some things like that. But you can see Brandon Thomas in this comic book trying to get Mira even more over with the readers using Arthur Curry, similar to what he does with Jackson Hyde earlier. And I think this is kind of pathetic. Mira says, I'm going to decline Exabel's invitation to speak at the Unity Conference. Arthur says, you will not. It's a wonderful idea. You'll be perfect. Think of all you've already done to make democracy possible in both the kingdoms. I haven't been able to end the conscriptions. Not yet. Not yet. But it's right there. You can stop other children from experiencing what you did. You'll be perfect, Mira. And I cannot wait to watch it happen. While not quite as overt and over the top as as the conversations with Jackson Hyde, in my opinion, still kind of pathetic. They're really making Arthur Curry this vessel just to get other characters over rather than being really a hero in his own right and someone to be respected. He's almost, you know, uh, showing fealty to his wife. There's nothing wrong with respecting your wife. I respect my wife and I talk very nice to her, but he should have some sense of his own accomplishments and his own sense of worth in the universe. So I, I didn't think that went over very well either. Definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about Aquaman the becoming number six and the baton handing off between Arthur Curry and Jackson Hyde? Is he ready for the Aquaman mantle? Do you think this was done well? Do you think this is going to get people people over? Are you ready for the Justice League to die and for, for Jackson Hyde to be part of, the, of JLQ and to go out there and, and save all the heroes? I don't think many people really are because I just don't think this was successful. And com- be completely honest, even if it was, DC Comics is in such disarray right now, I don't think anybody read this. But if you did, let me know because I definitely want to have a conversation about it in the comments section. Jackson Hyde won't be the only hero taking over a mantle typically associated with one of the classic DC heroes in the DC Comics universe. I actually saw this coming for about the last year. I've been talking about it. Check out this video if you want a little bit of a deeper look into what the death of the Justice League means and how we kind of saw it all coming for a very long time. If you're a DC Comics fan, you need to watch this video.